This is my new server. Well, not yet. It's actually still empty, but it will be my new server. And it's not really gonna be an upgrade because I'm not changing the motherboard, I'm not changing the processor, and I'm not upgrading the RAM. But it is quite interesting. Let's talk about it. So this is the Inwin IWRS42407. It's got 24 3.5 inch drive bays, which is an upgrade to my 12 on my Rosewell. So clearly that's why I'm upgrading, right? I must be running out of storage space. Mm, not really. Sometimes you just do things for fun. Is this gonna be fun though? I have no idea, I haven't done it yet. So you're probably just thinking, oh Brett, you're just moving your system over to a new chassis. That's not even interesting at all. Well, normally, no, it wouldn't be, but there are some features built into this chassis and some nuances with my motherboard that actually make this a pretty interesting, I don't know if I'm even calling this an upgrade anymore, but it makes it um, different. So one of the main differences we're gonna see here is that this chassis has a backplane and my current setup doesn't, which means all of my drives are connected directly to the HBA via a SAS 2 4 times SATA cable. And the thing with this backplane is that it comes in two flavors, a slim SAS model and an Oculink model. Now Oculink, that means there must be NVMe, right? Well, yeah. So this backplane is pretty interesting because it does do SATA, it does do SAS, and it does do NVMe. So some of you may be thinking, oh, a tri-mode backplane. Not quite, okay? This one's a little interesting. So all 24 of these bays can be set up with SAS or SATA hard drives and be connected directly to your motherboard or HBA via the mini SAS connectors. And there are three of them, but only two of them are for the 24 drives and one is for expansion. So 24 drives worth of storage connected back to your motherboard via two mini SAS connections. Now, if you're like me, you're used to just thinking for each uh, mini SAS connection, you get four drives. Now, if you do the math, uh, two times four is eight, and we have 24 drives. Normally, that would be a problem, but this backplane has an expander built into it, meaning that we can run all 24 drives off of two mini SAS connections. Now, you may be thinking there's gonna be a bandwidth issue squeezing 24 drives through two mini SAS connections, but with PCIe 4.0, that's not really gonna be an issue because we get 96 gigabits per second through both of those ports, meaning that if we do the math, that's 500 megabytes per second per drive if we're using all 24 bays. So even if you fill this out with SATA SSDs, you're probably not gonna run into an issue and we're not doing that. We're using hard drives. Okay, but what about those Oculink ports in NVMe? Well, there's actually eight Oculink ports to match up with eight of the bays that can take U.2 drives. Four here and four there will actually accept either SAS, SATA, or a U.2 drive. And now I know this sounds like tri-mode, but I don't think it's that because with a tri-mode backplane, you'd actually be able to use NVMe, SATA, or SAS, and just use one connection instead of having to have a dedicated Oculink connection just for your NVMe drives. Now, there's pros and cons to this. The pros are that if you're using NVMe and Oculink, you get the full bandwidth for each of your drives. The cons are that you need more ports and cables. So instead of just using one or two cables for the entire thing, no matter what types of drives I'm using, I have to use two cables for my SATA and SAS drives. And then if I wanna use the NVMe, I have to have an Oculink cable for each one. So that's what kind of makes this backplane interesting, but that's not the full tour of this chassis, so let's take a look at it. As I mentioned, we have 24 3.5 inch slots on the front, but if you go around the back, we have two 2.5 inch slots. And these are connected directly to a mini SAS connection. And this is designed for operating system drives. And I may or may not be using that. I'll talk about it in a bit, but it uses a mini SAS connection for both of those drives. So you can use one cable to connect both of those drives to your system. And staying around the back, you'll notice something that I've personally never used in my entire life. And that is redundant power supplies. We have two of these Inwin uh, 80 plus platinum 800 watt hot swappable power supplies. And to be honest, I'll probably just connect one because I don't even have two circuits in my rack. So 
you know, if the circuit goes out, both power supplies are going to go down. Now, the build quality of the case feels really good. You know, it's metal, um, feels solid, feels like something you'd spend a lot of money on. And the inside, I guess, isn't anything to write home about. There's space for a motherboard and some fans. Which brings me to one of my concerns about this entire upgrade process. So each of these fans in here is a 48 watt 12 volt fan and they're pretty chonky. So it's probably going to be loud and it's probably going to use a lot of power, which is one of my concerns. I'm hoping I can temper that with software, but if not, um, We'll see. And I kind of have the same concern about the power supplies too, because those are 800 watt power supplies and they have those tiny little 40 millimeter fans that are dummy thick and can be very loud. So I'm hoping it's not too loud. I know my server racks in my garage, but I still don't want it to be annoying. Now in the process of adding more drives and trying to understand how this backplane works, I went through a little carousel of HBA cards that I planned on using here. So currently I'm using a 16i 9300 series HBA card, which is fine for what I'm doing, but I needed something a bit different. Now I initially thought that 24 drives, I need a 24i card. So I bought one of those only to quickly realize I don't need that because this is using an expander and only has two mini SAS connections. So that means I only need an 8i card. Great, I can just use the old one that I used to use when I first built my server. Not quite, I mean, technically I could, but the problem here is that this is a 9200 series card, which runs on PCI Gen 3, or PCIe Gen 3. I know you guys get anal when I accidentally say PCI. That would actually mean that we are bottlenecked by the eight lanes of PCIe Gen 3.0, rather than using the PCIe Gen 4.0 that's compatible with the backplane. So I went ahead and bought this guy, which is a 9500 series card, which is PCI 4.0 and is tri-mode, but I don't really need the tri-mode features. All I needed was the PCIe Gen 4.0. And it uses a single cable. So I did have to buy a cable that goes from the one connection, I think it's like slim SAS something, to dual uh, mini SAS connections. So backplane to HBA, cool stuff. So in terms of software, we will be changing things up just a little bit. So right now, my entire setup is on Proxmox and the host and all the VMs run off of a single two terabyte NVMe drive. I've been wanting to change this for a while now, and this is the perfect excuse to do that. So I'd much rather have my Proxmox host running on a mirrored two NVMe drive pool, and then have all my VMs on a separate, probably the same two terabyte NVMe drive. So this takes us back to those two drives I mentioned before in the back with the mini SAS connection. Well, I have a mini SAS port, actually two of them on my motherboard, which would be perfect, right? Well, no, those don't actually work with a mini SAS connection. They only work with SATA drives using the mini SAS to four SATA port cable. So yeah, the plan was to uh, use two of these uh, crucial 250 gigabyte SATA SSDs for that. But I'm now realizing that that's not going to work. So what we're probably going to end up doing is just using two uh, silicon power. Is that what I have here? Two 256 gigabytes silicon power NVMe drives connected directly to our motherboard as our Proxmox host. And what I'm going to do is take that two terabyte NVMe drive that's currently being used and put it into one of these icy docs uh, NVMe to U.2 adapters and then plug it into one of the four slots or one of the eight slots that I have and use an Oculink port. I actually have one in here already. So check it out, that's what it looks like. Amazing, say ooh and ah, yeah, comment it down below. But yeah, NVMe drive in there, goes in here. Oculink cable runs from the back plane to the motherboard and we have a full bandwidth NVMe drive. Now, before I migrate everything over, I have been running a cron job. That's just a little script that backs up 
pretty much the entire Etsy directory in Proxmox because Proxmox doesn't have a host backup feature yet. So yeah, that is the plan. I guess the first step is I have to rip out my old server and uh, move everything over. So let's get started. So after moving the world's heaviest server upstairs and removing all the drives, probably should have done that before moving it, and then taking out the motherboard, I was ready to work on the new world's heaviest server. I assumed that this was going to be an easy swap. Should have known better when I immediately had to reposition the plastic contact paper. All good though, I just popped in the motherboard, installed my NVMe drives, got the fans connected, wired up the backplane to my HBA, and installed the rest of my PCIe devices. It was honestly pretty straightforward. I then had to remove all my hard drives from their old sleds, which weren't toolless, into the new InWin toolless sleds. Then I spent the rest of the night wanting to throw this system out of the window. I'll explain in a bit. The next day, I was finally ready to get this thing put into the rack. At this point, there's 12 hard drives installed, so you boys jacked. After the hard part was done, my wife came over to offer her assistance. It was now time to install the five extra drives that I bought because why not? Then I plugged everything in and fired it up. So let's talk about everything. Now it's been a few days and I have some things to say. First off, what was that major issue I had? Well, luckily it had nothing to do with the actual chassis and everything to do with my ASRock motherboard. Now, remember how I said I was going to install my two NVMe host drives in the motherboard and then use my two terabyte NVMe drive in the chassis with Oculink? Well, uh, that didn't work. No matter what combination of those three drives I did, if I had all of them connected, one of my NVMe drives just wouldn't show up. And it was always one of the 250 gigabyte ones. So I tried doing the way I initially had it. Then I decided, hey, how about I take those two host drives and use the Oculink for those and then put the two terabyte back into the motherboard. Same thing, the 256 gigabyte drive just wouldn't work. And before you say anything, yes, I made sure the jumpers were correct because you have to adjust them to take some PCI lanes from PCI slot number two to use for the Oculink and the SATA and all that good stuff. So in the end, I just decided to revert back to my original, original plan of using those two 2.5 inch SATA drives in the back there. And I know you're thinking, wait, you said that wasn't gonna work. Well, after further inspection, I realized that you could just take that little um, SAS connector mini backplane off and just use them as regular SATA drives. And then I had the two terabyte NVMe drive just chilling in the motherboard. So unfortunately, I don't even get to use any of the cool Oculink slots in here and all thanks to the ASRock motherboard and whatever they got going on over there. And yes, I did upgrade to the newest BIOS. That didn't fix anything. Now, in terms of getting Proxmox back up and running, it was honestly super easy. I just went with a clean install of Proxmox and just imported all of my VMs from their backups. And since everything was running on the same exact hardware, everything just imported cleanly. And in terms of the Etsy backups that I run daily, I use those to reference the notes configuration I have as well as some scripts. So they weren't totally worthless. Now in terms of TrueNAS, I was debating on sticking with core or upgrading to scale. And after learning that 13 was gonna be the last version of core, I decided to uh, stick with core. Yeah, I actually planned on upgrading to scale, but after all the issues I was having with this thing, I just wanted to win. And after having Proxmox just work flawlessly on the import, I really didn't want to touch anything. And the best part about TrueNAS and ZFS is that everything imported so easily since all the ZFS metadata is stored on the drives. And another good thing is that since I added more drives, all I had to do was add an extra VDEV to my pool and Within a couple of seconds, it was done. And moving on to one of the main concerns I had with this system was going to be the fan noise because those fans are beefy and the one in the power supply is tiny and possibly annoying. But surprise, surprise, it's actually super quiet. And that's not just from like a enterprise server quiet standpoint. It's actually much quieter than 
any of my other systems, honestly. Now I did go into the fan control and manually set the fans to 20%. And until I see any thermal issues, I'll just stick with that. Another thing I was kind of worried about was power usage, but honestly, I don't see much of a difference. Obviously there's a bit more power usage because I added more hard drives and the fans are a little bit more powerful, but nothing really significant. One annoying thing is that I did have to order an ATX 12 volt adapter to PCIe because the power supply they include does not have any six pin or eight pin PCIe cables. Honestly, not that big of a deal. I think it was like $10, but yeah, I had to power the GPU somehow. Now, overall, I'm extremely happy with this setup. It looks cool in my rack. It holds way more drives and it has some cool features with the backplane. Now, obviously, I didn't get to use the cool part with the Oculate due to the ASRock motherboard, but if I really wanted to, I could buy a PCIe card and slap it in there to do it. But you know what? For now, we'll just leave it as is. And honestly, it gives me the opportunity to make yet another server upgrade video. So thinking like a YouTuber there. But that's it. Let me know what you think about this whole upgrade process down in the comments below. If you like the video, then drop a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 24 plus two bay for you, Nas. That's super aesthetically pleasing. You guys are awesome. And if you're still watching, you're an Azrock Rack motherboard. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.